Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living inside of your aquarium. I thought that I would try doing this whole uh, rigmarole a little later in the evening. So we're going to give it a shot. I don't know if this will be a long one. I know on the East Coast it's late for you guys, but I was hoping for some of you in Singapore, Australia, maybe the UK, maybe this is a time that um, you're around. So, And I know a lot of you have insomnia too. Some people have messaged me and stuff, so... We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a little bit of a live show tonight. Uh, what's up, Betsy? Hey, buddy, you're awake. I figured you would be. You were the one of the, one of the people that I had in mind with this show. I was like, I'm gonna try doing it late tonight, randomly. Like my wife's out; she's at a concert, and I was like, I'm gonna hang out with the fish. And I know that sounds kind of sad when I think about that for a minute, but I'm happy. Um, so I'm hanging out with the fish, eating Oreos. Hey, hello, Alonzo. Hello, fishy snowman. Asian Mantrix, Asan, Asanin, Asanin, Asanine, As, uh, Nin, I, I, I'm, I'm done, Assassin, I don't know, uh, hey, T-Hang, wow, okay, there's quite a few people up, that's cool, um, I wasn't sure if anybody was gonna be, like, around right now, so I was just kinda trying it out, trying a late night one out, uh, I wanted to kinda talk a little bit about um, obviously feel free to ask questions as always, or chat, whatever. I was going to show you kind of some stuff that's going on. Let me flip this around here. Uh, that's going on in my tank. <laughs> yeah, I knew you would be up, Betsy, because you and I are never sleeping. Um, so in any case, what's up, Patricia? Hello, how are you? Hope you're having a good evening, everyone. So this tank has been on CO2 now, and crazy furts to the level that like honestly I had one guppy in there and I was like uh, I don't know if the guppies uh, should be in with ammonia because the ammonia is still at 0.25 because of this stuff leaching but literally I cleaned these rocks with a toothbrush yesterday and check out the algae so I need to scale back the light on that um, and just you know there's probably not enough plants growing in here, which there's a lot of rocks. So I also threw in some uh, some happy little trees of the water, some water lettuce and some uh, oh, cat's tongue or I don't know. There's a mix of stuff in there that I just grabbed out of another tank. But also uh, I wanted to show you that the Pelia is like bubbling like crazy and uh it's got nice purling going on and it hasn't had co2 on it for hours and same with all like the little uh the little plants in the tank so this tank is as my first high-tech tank really like going all in um it's going well and the other thing that's cool is i fed these guppies this morning but you know they're young middle-aged guppies teenage guppies i should say these are the ones that I crossed a bluegrass with a um, with a Japanese blue endler downstairs, and then of course the leopard guppies that I'm working on. I'll show you more of them in a minute. But um, and then this is the last of my panda slash rainbow guppies that didn't really turn out. Uh, <laughs> uh, didn't turn out well. I'm just watching the chat. You guys are funny. Um, but yeah, so I need to figure out how to take care of this um, algae because it's growing that looks like almost an inch a day. And then I'm also getting diatome algae back there, the fuzzy kind, the, the little dots, this, this kind here. And I scraped this off before I left the house and it's already growing back. So the nutrients and the fertilizers are on point, like they're too much. And so... I think I might leave the CO2, yeah, I think I might leave the CO2 off for a couple days, but I do like the purling, and I, and the thing is that this substrate isn't the thin one, and uh, if you're not getting your pan, your your plants to, to purl, um, you probably want better, uh, whether that's fertilizer or whatever, but also water rotation and circulation is pretty key so otherwise co2 just comes up to the top and it and it pools and you'll see like a film if you look from below like down like this like you can actually still see the air bubbles from the hang off the back filter and it's that disruption of the water surface level that 
causes the gas to get into the the you know water sc- column. Sorry, trying to think of words. Oh, you can see how much algae there is there. That's one day's growth. It's insane. So I put also a Siamese algae eater in here because I thought he'd be happy as all heck. (laughs) And he was not. He did not like that there was still ammonia in the water. He was acting like he wanted to not be in there. So I took him out, watched him carefully. Um, But yeah, more plants. That's the other thing, like Betsy's saying. So I'm just throwing some in. But tomorrow I'm going to get plants more plants for hopefully from aquarium zen who's sponsoring the tank i'm going to talk with the owner again real quick because i've got some rare ludwigia ex lacustris and ludwigia r luwala and then i've got also down in there the tiger lotus or tricolor lotus blue egyptian whatever you want to call it um nymphaea micrantha is its name but that bloomed off of a lily pad it's planted so in any case the this tank it needs more life just like betsy said and even though some of the stuff like the glosso and the rotalas and ludwigias are going to grow pretty quickly the pogostema is growing really quick the erectus um it just needs something like wisteria or water sprite to just suck the, the the living nutrients out of things. But to get your tank to pearl, it's a fine line between scrubbing algae all the time. And I've made, I've cut myself out. I, I have this, uh, this is a hard uh, slope to, to climb. Let's say that because this is all rock. And so almost everyone does... Um, rock scapes like this yeah no these guppies i don't think are going to stay in here either by the way patricia i think i'm going to do uh uh dwarf emerald danios the erythromicron the little ones with the stripes and then uh maybe some cpds and then maybe uh a few like three auto synclas in here and see how that goes because let me take you over to the other tank that now this tank has been set up four months, I want to say, four or five months, four months. And it has, it's sorry, it's not, it's not clean right now. Let's get it a little bit clean. I was working in all these tanks earlier today. So, um, but you can see the rock has actually, it went through a process where it grew hair algae. Then it grew like black beard algae and I, I plucked that away and for the most part that's not growing and now it's just this interesting green and red diatome algae that the fish and the nearite snails and everybody seem to be cool with and it's kind of an interesting look but I'm kind of just watching this type of rock age this is a different type of rock than the other one but that rock right there is the same as the oh is buffering I'm sorry I'll try to move slower this this rock back in here, the lighter color one where the sea, where the uh, Celestial Pearl Daniels swim in past, that's the same stone that I have in my other tank. Whereas this rock is a different source that I, I got out of the ground elsewhere. Um, but it just shows you that like our water here will grow certain kinds of things. The le- leopard endlers, here's uh, my newest batch i'm trying to make one that's like really strong with the the black and yellow kind of like yellow jackets and then downstairs i'll show you what the other group looks like and also lucas i'm doing some art for lucas and he mentioned it on his live stream tonight so i know i can talk about it now but i'm doing some limited edition artwork for him and uh maybe i'll even give you guys a sneak at it before he gets a sneak at it Ooh, and that fish actually has a sore on it that i didn't notice earlier today and so that could be a bacterial thing or it could be the fact that i was dumb and i put a siamese algae eater in here that was not a siamese algae eater it was a chinese algae eater when i lived more looking because i was like man that thing's really aggressive and it ended up biting at the other fish so i need to take a look at that cpd that's got scales missing and a and a raw spot on its side and figure out what's going on there because i'm just noticing that but these are probably the two fish that i'm likely to put 
in that other tank. And then definitely I love the blue shrimp, but I might go with yellow in the other tank. And I have them coming from um, Lucas Brett's uh, is sending me some shrimp and some plants and stuff like that too. So um, let's see here. Any success with DIY CO2? I'm just foray into the planted tank hobby and thinking of rigging up one. I'll be starting with entry level plants and don't have pocket to afford a CO2 tank. You know, if I were you, I wouldn't worry about it. This tank doesn't have CO2 right now. I have run CO2 in here for periods, but if you have enough um, fish in a tank and you do enough water changes and it has a decent light. Like this is actually a coral reef type light, uh, that I just got for like 10 bucks at an auction of our club. And I mean, everything in this tank grows really well. And let me, let me show you something before you think about doing CO2 or the DIY CO2. I do have a, a proper CO2 and then I have a giant canister downstairs that is like it's supposed to be a 20 pound canister and it's weighs 42 pounds right now um but so these lights these are called cree c-r-e-e -E, led lights and they're spotlights and these are 30 watts you could get 150 or 60 or 230s if you've got a 40 gallon or you know breeders or longer but these lights right here i have cut I cut this plant at the beginning of the week. I cut the top off at the bushy part and replanted it down here. And it has already come back. So these spotlights are insane. They are just crazy at growing plants. And with all of the fish that I have in here, at one point I had even more, sorry. Um, there's never been CO2 in here until tonight, ironically. I did start running some CO2. And the reason I did that is because the algae is growing and I need to scrape it off, off of here. It's like a powder that I get in there, but it's like hard powder. Um, but yeah, the, uh, let's see, I'm just trying to read the chat. Yeah, um, the light is, is cool except for the, um, it reflects the green really strong off the plants and then the whole tank looks kind of green. But I can't control the aperture when I'm doing a live stream. Got to go, good night, good night, Patricia. Uh, but the Nearite snails are starting to work on it again, but I just, I need to get a new blade because I have a straight edge blade that I use on these curved bow fronts and it's impossible, like I got the back but I can't get the right angle with my arm all the way in the tank because this is an extra deep, like, custom 40. It's not a 37 and a half like most of the bow fronts that people round up to 40. So I have to reach into my armpit and then scrape backwards at a funky angle to get the, the right amount of leverage on it with, like, a real razor blade. And that's what it really needs to get off of there. Um, the other thing I thought about putting back in the rock tank were some of these lemon tetras or ember tetras. Uh... I don't know. I kind of want something that can reproduce in theory. And the ram's horn snails in this tank recently went insane and nothing has changed really. But I also replanted so that the entire bottom of the tank now is filled up with new starts of plants. And I have an auction coming up at our local club. And so I'll be auctioning off the plants. But what you want to do if you have a tank like this that you're going to load up like this is also put a good amount of fish in. I'd use root tabs if you can. Um, but I put fish that use every layer of the water. So I use, uh, you know, I have gudgeons and things for like the cracks and crevices. I have the algae eaters and now they're fighting with each other because they're Chinese. Sorry, that spotlight was right on the algae. And then I've got a few rainbow fish and mostly tetras in here. This is an interesting side note. So this tetra here, you see that black stuff on the back of the tail on the spinal cord? Let's see here if you can see it. That black stuff right there. So I've noticed that in several tetras now and it, it will actually grow. I've seen it in, uh, in, let's see, what species have I seen it in? I've seen it in the ember tetras, and I've seen it in the rummy nose tetras, and I've seen it, seen it in the lemon tetras. And basically what it is, is it's some sort of growth or buildup on their spine, maybe cancer. I don't know. 
but it gets darker and darker and it spreads up their spinal column in the course of months. And then they start getting twitchy and then they die. And there's no saving them that I've found. Um, yeah, aquarium co-ops, easy green. That's, I use that too. That stuff's pretty good. Um, depending on your plant, certain plants like this lily is not doing as well just with the easy green, the way it's been in this tank. Um, and I, I don't know what the deal is, but it wants something that it's missing. And so in the other tanks where I've dosed them with more iron and stuff, that has helped a lot. So um, the only problem with these lights is they're so bright that like Boos or Anubius or plants like that, Java ferns, um, yeah, that can be an issue. It's too much light. So keep them hidden away or at an angle or something. Um, and have I noticed... Let's see, I saw a question here. Have I noticed... And then I use aquarium co-ops, fish, and fry food, too. I need to feed them downstairs in a sec anyways. Um, have you noticed the tetra get sick more than other fish? Um, no. No, I haven't. Uh, but they are a very social fish. And so I think that the possibility once they are sick of spreading it is higher but i have seen them get that cancer or whatever it is maybe it's a viral thing or maybe it's a cancerous thing but i have seen them get that several times now um i was trying to show you here so these are japanese blue endlers mixed with bluegrass guppies and they have the big fan tail uh but they're all young still mixed with a uh lyre tail and so they're kind of cool looking. Go under the light so you can show the people you're blue. Well, in any case, you'll have to believe me. They're powder blue and purple when uh, under the proper lighting. But they're still young. So basically, I was just getting those males away from the females because I have down to the dungeon we go. I have another project waiting for them. So are the Cree spotlights pricey? Uh, the Cree spotlights are like... $25 a piece. They're really cheap. Um, they, and they're strong. Like one you could use on a 20 gallon and then have like Anubius and Java fern over here and then your tall plants, you know, along the back or whatever. But, you know, I never did a grief finally on the downstairs room name. I need to do that like yesterday. Yeah. What gives? I'm, I'm slacking, guys. I'm sorry. Um, but in this tank... Uh, we've got guppies, mostly females right now, that are from this male. So he's by far the oldest uh, endler. He's actually an endler. I don't know. I forget you can't focus in without an expensive camera in uh, on YouTube. But I'll try to focus like this. Yeah. So you can kind of see the Japanese blue. And then their mother has, of this generation, I'm crossing back with a female that has color in her tail. Yeah, endler's room is pretty good. Um, that is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, the, the color on these two Endler's game, yeah, that might be even more like apt. Other thing I like it maybe upstairs for that other tank is the Ruby, uh, Tetras. They're kind of hard to find sometimes, but they're awesome little fish, um, when they want to be, but they're the other one that I've seen the cancer in or whatever it is. So let's feed these little greedy, oh, put too much food in. That happens, I put way too much food in. Oops, well they're gonna be real full. Good thing there's catfish and snails in there. Sometimes these squeeze bottles get like hum humidity in them like this when you keep them near the tank and then they clump up and then like nothing's coming out and all of a sudden like a clump comes out. But I mean guppies will just keep eating until they look like they're gonna explode. In fact, I've actually seen one distended with a stomach that it, like, died. Um, so, endlers, yeah. Um, all right, so down here we have the leopard endlers. This is generation five of what I'm working on from Lucas Bretts. These are the ones that are showing the least amount of black on them. As, as they're getting older, some of them are, and now I'll have to pull them out. Um, but basically... These guys have, uh, some of them are all yellow, which is interesting. So they still have like light striping. Come on, show up. Striping and dots.
but they don't have the dark spot. They have actually green spots instead. And that's the first generation I pulled this trade out. So there's like no females of this generation, which is kind of odd, but there's a good amount of males in here right now. And some of them have really beautiful emerald or turquoise green coloration on them. Uh, come on. Yeah, there's something stuck in the nozzle of my feeder. Okay. And then down here, we have another experiment that's just going on for now. This tank needs lots of cleaning. This was the one that had the cribs in it, and now I'm, it's just like my shrimp tank at the moment and a killifish tank. Um, but it needs cleaning because this substrate's too thick. Vex Cat, how's it going? Um, the substrate's too thick. So check out this oddball. That endler, can you see it with the orange? Stop moving. This endler with the orange stripe, that's the only marking on it, is an orange stripe down its side. Came out of the leopard guppies. Have no idea how. It does have a dot, I guess, that the, they have also. But no idea where this guy came from. Must be some really latent, bizarre genes back in his life somewhere. <laughs> back in his gene pool. But I'm putting him with a couple other uh, of the female leopard endlers just to see, yeah, it looks like an orange line endler, totally, or the, like, what do they call them, lightning or stripe or electric, like, there's a lot of different names for them that I've seen, but it came out of these guys, so odd, I'll have to ask Lucas if he's aware of them being in his line, these guys were at Aquarium Co-op for a while with um, Corey, and so... It's possible maybe Cory had another line of guppy that bred with them in between and then their generation removed or something. I don't know. But I can't decide. Maybe you guys can help me decide. Do I go with the ones that have the green and random purple colors and things like that? Or do I keep cultivating the black for, like, bolder stripes and stuff? Because I kind of like this, like, pastel yellow endler. Um... Like, the pastel and the green. Yeah, Betsy, thanks, both. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing right now, but I need to decide because... Well, let's be honest here. Um, yeah, purples, I like purples, too. I think we'll go with uh, some purples. So the next plan, and I asked Lucas, because I was like, dude, have you ever done this? Is, like, check out this this one who never formed. This, this was a coal guppy. She has a... Spinal deformation because there was not enough calcium in the water when she was growing up. She's two generations older than everyone else in the tank. She has given birth to more babies than anyone else, and none of them have had the issue. So, just goes to show you that you don't always discount a fish. Look at her spine, her poor thing. But she moves quick, too, so it's kind of crazy. But don't always discount, like, the coal uh, fish, unless it's a deformity you know is going to get passed down, like double fins on everything what do you do for a calcium difference well what i did uh i took a note from lucas bretz while we're talking about him i actually took eggs i boiled the eggs i had myself a hard boiled egg or egg salad sandwich whatever and then i put it in the back of the hang i took the boiled egg uh you know the shells and i put those in the back of the hang off filters after they'd been boiled and i just let them uh grow algae and basically the algae i think would then like algae and bacteria and stuff on on the eggshells in the hang off the back one they work as a substrate for beneficial bacteria but for two they also have um the calcium comes off in in whatever bacteria is consuming it and it's in the water column it's in the phytoplankton and i think the, the fish just get it that way it's a it's one way i mean you can also put cuddle bone in there you can feed them food with extra calcium also thing is uh yeah jurassic park uh the the other thing i have in this tank that's unusual i suppose is i've got black ram's horn snails like their flesh is black and their shells are not very great to look at but Somebody who watches the channel sent me those, so I am determined to keep them separate and alive just because I'm curious, and that was a kind of them. Would you suggest the eggshells to help new shrimp get past their first molt? I would suggest just good quality shrimp food. Honestly, if you have a tank, like this tank, I know it looks dirty and like 
there's a filter floating in it. Just I, I do this so that that way I have, uh, you know, filter medium ready to go, media ready to go for when I need to jump start a new tank. But this like, you know, all sorts of diatome stuff and a little bit algae and leaves falling apart. Shrimp will just explode when you put them in this tank. Like they just grow like crazy. And the other thing you can do is if you have a snail problem in another tank and you have shrimp, what you do is you take your snails if you're up to this. I know some people are more humane than I am, but you take your snails and you smush them and throw them in this tank. Like take them with tweezers or whatever. If you have something like, like this, or even like I used the spatula the other day, um, but something, a, a spoon or whatever, and you can let them be in the tank, but like one that's like over here, you would just smush it and the shrimp will love to eat that. Um, and other snails will love to eat the snail. So you keep your snails down that way. Ram's horn and pond or bladder snails. Th that seems to be what I do it to the most. Um, yeah, you can just smush them with your hands too. That's totally fine. I just can't always get them because they're down in the gravel and stuff. But yeah, I just smush them and the other critters seem to really like them. Plus then that calcium from their shell is in the ecosystem. And eventually it deteriorates. And the older the tank you have, the better it gets. I got some leertail fry from that seller in Hawaii, hoping some of the females make it back from this batch. I still need to get you a picture of the young males. I have two young males that are just starting to develop the swords. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'd love to see that. That'd be rad. Um, I really want these guys. I want to do Lear t or Liar. Why well, keep saying Lear? Liar Tails uh, with them. Uh, where did you order the shrimp from? I'm just uh, curious. Um because I have blue shrimp coming in from Lucas and yellow shrimp, I believe. So I think I've got those two coming from him. And I don't have a shrimp endorsement to him. I mean, I, I do buy his shrimp. He's awesome. And they're grown in the U.S. and he's been breeding them forever. Yeah, okay. You've got them from Lucas too. Um, but he's had that line for over 10 years, I think. Uh, they just started like 25 minutes ago. You're good, fake name. Welcome. Come on in have a beer or whatever you do uh but yeah so in here also i wanted to show you the tree that i made way back not way back a couple months ago i used some of the stuff yeah dr pepper i need my dr pepper where's my dr pepper um the stuff i used on it it's like a florist wire has started to corrode and iron you can actually see not just rust but there's some sort of iron loving bacteria on there too um so odd uh all my cherry shrimp are in another tank i have been keeping successfully the neocaridina shrimp in all my tanks but also i yeah i like this fluorite substrate here with the sand mixture it holds the plants really well and the variance when you mix sand and the fluorite together is good enough that it it really um holds on holds on really well to the plant roots like crips and things like that they just grow like crazy in the, in this mix for me now these lights, if you haven't seen these yet, I literally went to Home Depot, bought aluminum track line for like screen doors, or I think it's just called U-Track, like the letter U. And then I put a uh, waterproof outdoor LEDs happen to fit exactly in it. I think they're like a third of an inch or something like that. And I put those through, and then I just got a little cheapo dollar transformer box off eBay and uh, soldered that together on both ends. <laughs> I didn't even use a legitimate soldering thing. I used a propane torch, uh, <laughs> or acetylene, sorry, and heated up a different thing. But yeah, so I made these for like, I made four of them for 20 bucks altogether. So these are two of them and they're just zip tied up there. Uh, and then here we've got a Fluval uh, light. So my parameters for my shrimp, I think I saw someone asking, uh, I have like nothing in my water. My TDS is 28. People who've watched this know that about me and, and or Seattle aquarium co-ops up here too. And aqua pros, um, all that we, none of us have anything in our water. 
on the west coast of Oregon, Idaho, or Oregon, Washington, and Vancouver. So I, I like to use certain rocks, like this one has calcium in it, it gives a little bit of hardness. Dragonstone, if you know the right kind, can. I also got some bunk dragonstone not that long ago that was no good. It was dragonstone that fell apart and it raised my pH and my TDS like crazy. So it must have had like friggin' baking soda in it or something, you know, basically. Um, but yeah, if you're in the Midwest, Florida, like down in certain parts of Texas and California, you can get really, really hard water out of the tap, like 500 TDS, Indiana, Missouri, uh, Iowa, let's see, Chicago. Like that's why cichlids do so well there too. Up here, I can put uh, I can put caradina shrimp straight into my tap water. Right, let's see if we can find where they're at right now. There should be some mish. Yep, right here. So there's some Michelin shrimp in here, and I've added nothing to the water. That they're just cool. Like whatever the food adds to the water seems to be just about right. And the TDS is like maybe a hundred in this tank right now because it's newer. It'll probably get up to two hundred, which would be too much for them. But this doesn't even have a buffering substrate or anything. Um, yeah, Iowa cichlids, exactly. So this is the other ginormous CO2 tank. And this is a beast. I still have some leftover Fluval stratum and some Amazonia ADA light from upstairs. So I might redo that bottom tank in those things so that those that can be another shrimp tank because I've I got away from my shrimp. I had a good amount of shrimp around the new year and then a bunch died because of a fish. And you guys know that story if you've been watching the channel. But a gudgeon jumped from one tank to another and then his breeding partner did the same thing in the same night. I woke up in the morning all my baby shrimp were just like lifeless. They weren't eaten, but most like half the adults and all the babies were just like not moving or like the ma some of the adults look kind of crushed and the gudgeons went on like a murder rampage and just like smushed every shrimp. I had to f look under a microscope to notice like what even happened up here. I keep this one dark. I don't run as much light on it. Killifish, these ones, this room gets light enough in the day plus the ambient light that it's fine uh, but I've got my clown killies in here again they had eggs that were in the water for a while and they didn't hatch after two and a half weeks three weeks so I just um, do you sell any livestock um, I do from time to time right now like I've expanded my tanks a little bit more so I used to have a lot of tanks and I used to sell guppies, like fancy guppies. That was my thing, guppies and endlers. Then I had shrimp and for the last, I don't know, six months, I was selling shrimp uh, to local pet stores. And then the shrimp thing kind of crashed down on me and I started getting into the playing with the aquascaping and more of the plants and stuff. And so I moved away from that a little bit, but I wanted to show you up here. Oh, cool. The, the odd catfish that don't have a for sure name yet are out. Um, so I have these cherry red shrimp. They're not, uh, anything sp that special. I bred them from like wild, super low grade cherry. Um, and they're doing okay. Yeah, let me show you the lily, Betsy, because something's up with it. It's not happy right now in this water. It's, uh... Look at, look at how chewed up these leaves are. And I, I think something's chewing on them. Uh, but they're, they are beautiful. I love this Egyptian lily. This is, uh... Nymphaea micrantha is the name of this, but it is a beautiful plant. Plus it smells nice. And it has a blue and purple flower. Um, this is wisteria here. So I would just throw this in the other tank, but it's covered in baby ram's horn snails. So I need to get those off. I'll put some, put that on a paper towel. I thought cutting it loose would help a little bit. Also, I've got uh, some other, yeah, nitrate eater for sure. That's why I would be putting it in the other tank. That and um, also the octopus, uh, pogo salmon octopus, 
that would uh oh yeah thank you i i appreciate that vita vance vita vance put up a, a film of his setup on the website that's pretty dope on the um the facebook page so i appreciate that buddy thanks I like seeing what other people are doing. I mean, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not like Lucas or Aquarium Co-op or whatever like that. But, um, you know, just average guy keeping fish, I suppose. Maybe a little over average, but not definitely hardcore or anything. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys, for mashing that like button. Uh, so somebody asked what type of shrimp I have. I have these cherry shrimp. So I have those. I also have some Bloody Mary mixed in with them. Um, I just think this is cute. He's just eating algae. Thanks, fake name. Uh, so yeah, in this tank right now, um, there's actually, you might not believe it, but there are well over a hundred shrimp in here. And I've just let their numbers rebound. They're hiding all over, but they get bold at night. Like here's another one in here. They're just all over. Uh, they get bold at night and midday around noon. They come out onto these branches and they like sun themselves. I don't know what's up with that. Then the other shrimp that I have that's a consistent line is we have Malawa shrimp in this tank. There's one right there. Nice timing. They look like gonzo to me. Let's see if we can zoom in. They've got these crazy eyeballs that are white with the dots in the center. And they just look like gonzo from the Muppets to me. So those are uh, Malawa shrimp. I have an episode on that if you're curious about them. Uh, but they're, they're good at eating algae, like actually as good as a monos. They're just not as big. But yeah, they're pretty cool. Um, and let's see here. Loving this channel. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Or ma'am. Uh, do you have a lot of places? I have have wait do you have a lot of places i have my go got, my got into them yet uh hold on oh plecos plecos uh no i don't have a lot of plecos i do think that plecos are a good money maker if you can do it well with certain breeds especially now that brazil has banned all exports on their plecos um that being said I don't have the space to do plecos. A lot of people, you need, you want a bigger tank, you know, for the adults. But then I've got these blue dream shrimp in here too. And there's probably, I don't know, a dozen or two dozen of them in here also. You can see them around. These ones aren't really solid. And so I'm in a dilemma that Lucas is going to send me some of his shrimp. It, but I do have a couple plecos. So there's one pleco. And then I have another uh, that's a mixture of brown and super red. It's a calico super red that I got really cheap. But I haven't, I just haven't gotten into plecos because of money for one. Uh, but I would love to have more. Um, green dragon plecos are really cool um, too. Yeah, the long fin ones. But I love my blue shrimp. Th those are. They're my babies, so I'm really glad to be getting more from LRB Aquatics. Lucas, um, he's sending me some better quality. These ones I got from a place that had a really fair price on them, and they're they're fine, but they're not like award winning. And he's won awards for his shrimp, so I'm getting some shrimp from them. Also, Aquatic Arts is sending me some stuff, so <laughs> I'm about to get shrimp from. Flip Aquatics Art and from uh, the ones I bought off of uh, Lucas. So I, I spent like, I don't know, 60 bucks on shrimp just to get some yellow ones actually from Lucas. And then he approached me and he was like, hey man, would you draw a cartoon of me? And, or, or, you know, like some art for me? And I was like, yeah, let's do that and, and do a trade. Um so we want to do like a mad scientist thing. So this is super, super rough sketch, but we're having the idea of maybe like him holding up a beaker full of shrimp and like, you know, like mad scientist lab mixing different genetics and stuff. Um, and then kind of probably a little bit of a psychedelic album cover, like side art stuff going on. So we'll see, but I don't know. We'll get there. You can kind of see some of this is my engagement photo, but this is a mural I did. 
a while back. So I have a lot of diff. Yeah, it's just a beaker, whatever. I can't remember. Or is it an Erlenmeyer flask? I don't remember what what to call it. I haven't taken chemistry in a long time. Um, yeah. So yeah, here's the Easy Green. People were mentioning that this tank. I've done the Easy Green. I've done iron, and then I've also done some more micronutrients. Uh, like manganese and some other stuff. Um, missed you saying that. I had my eyes rolled back in my head trying to remember. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. The crypt in this tank, by the way, is gone, is growing like crazy. The uh, Ludwigia is actually so red that, like, I think I gave it too much iron because now it's not, it doesn't have that golden red. Like, you're not seeing it in this see if I can, yeah, there you can see it better. But it doesn't have golden parts to the naked eye. It just looks red now, like it might have gotten just overloaded with iron or something. And same with one of the pogo stemons I have, Erectus, is, is a, uh, yeah, not, not working to its full potential. So I definitely need to get some nitrate suckers in here other than these top lovers, which, have perked back up to life. They were kind of in a dull tank with not a lot going on. But I need to figure out where I'm going to put all these shrimps that I... Yeah, it's it's uh, Sylvania. Uh, cat tongue, and then there's also large size water lettuce. Uh, are there, is there small miniature water lettuce too? No, I think it's just random particles. I think it's just the two of them. Um, but yeah, and then this Anubius wasn't doing well, Golden Coin, but I moved it. Oh, Priscilla, what's up? How's it going? Uh, how, uh, what time is it, Priscilla? Where are you at? You said good morning, huh? Um, but yeah, so in these cracks, I need to figure something out, but they're still getting too much light for Anubius, it looks like. So my Anubius, my uh, Heldulata, and my South Sedakin. Uh, yeah, it's after midnight. Oh, gotcha. Art. Um, so yeah, in any case, 11.20 p.m. Okay, never mind. You are central time zone? Oh, no, you're, you're mountain time zone. Hold on, let me see. I need to get my soda. Sorry, it's dark, folks. What? Where's my Dr. Pepper? Oh, I'm going to be upset. Am I out? I think I'm out. I think I'm out. You know, in MTV Cribs, they always say, like, that the refrigerator's the most intimate... I'm sorry, Betsy. I'll be slower. In MTV Cribs, they always say that the fridge is the most intimate. No. Uh, so, anyways, I have a uh, Sprite for now, I guess. My friend left it here. So, I've got a can of half-flat Sprite from my friend Ben. I'm sure he doesn't have cooties. Or if he does, I have them too, so whatever. Mm. <sighs> That's better. It's the thirst quencher, they say. But yeah, so what's the tank count at? Well, that's debatable. Tanks that I own right now, nine. Tanks that are up and running and cycled? Not count. This one is not cycled yet. Um, but it's getting there. It's enough that endlers are living in it fine and guppies can live in it fine. But, um, yeah, it's, now Alex, water is way better. For, yeah, I know, water is way better for me. I actually make a point of drinking, like, a half gallon of water a day. Sorry, I'm trying to get out of the Zoom mode. Oh, why do they make it so hard on phones? Okay, so then over here, what else was I going to, I was going to show you something. Um, what was it? It was a comment that spurred the thought. Uh, oh, just how much I need to scrub algae. It's just, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mess of a human being. Also, I want to start doing summer tubbing, spring tubbing, but, um, the weather is cold as heck. Today it's like raining sideways and like 40 degrees. This is the tank with the golden red ram's horns. So these have a, a gold shell. Yeah, these are, uh, well, these are, yeah, in theory, tiger endlers, but I've kind of bred them more into leopard endlers. This was the father that bred those ones downstairs that had the green in them. And then the role model, too, of the species that I was really trying, or of the strain, 
are these ones. And you can't see it on YouTube on the live stream, but you, you'll see it in other videos if you ever go looking uh, on my channel. But these ones have blue... Um, yeah, these are from Lucas. That's what they're they're from, is Lucas... Um, his. So, in any case, yeah. They... This is... This is are, these are his, and I've been selectively breeding this strain for a while. Um, I have been in the fish hobby for 23 years, as, like, compulsively. But I've been in this phase of it is about a year old right now. So I lived in a place before with my wife where... Before, well, we got married, I guess, two years ago now. Um, I'm just over 30. So, early 30s. Let's better friends we are now, Betsy. <laughs> yeah, Betsy's great. Um, but yeah, so I kept guppies and literally sold them to stores, like through my dad. My dad would have to drive because they wouldn't buy them from a kid that was like illegal in our state or something. It wasn't until I was... 16 that I could sell them. So my dad sold guppies to the store for me and then gave me the money, which was really nice of him. Uh, but I started like reading up about them. I was a sick kid. I had uh, allergies and immune problems, like um, overactive immune system problems. Now it turns out that was lupus what was what part of what was going on. And so I always had asthma as a kid and just like swelling and stuff like that. And so, yeah, uh, I seem younger than 30. Sweet. I'll take it. When I was like under 21, all I wanted was to look 21. And then as soon as you turn 21, you're like, God, I wish I wasn't old, didn't look older than 21. So there's the other Pleco in the tank. It's a Calico, but it was a super red that got mixed with the Calico. And the guy at the pet store was like, oh, this one's so ugly. I don't want it. It's like three bucks or four bucks or whatever. But they do a great job. So they get all the algae that grows runners of any sort off these rocks. But they leave that red algae alone. Um, yeah. So uh, sometimes aquarium co-op when I can get it. Oh, yeah. Betsy is talking. I was like, all those channels, those are Northwest people. So Steenfot, Corvus, Ocean, or Joel... Um, and then Corey over at Aquarium Co-op, uh, along with Jimmy Nguyen or, um, Schwiski Vision, and then, um, who else is out here? Oh, Aquapros, he's down south, about 100 miles of here, uh, but there's a lot of us in the Northwest that are on YouTube doing stuff, um, and then also Lucas, and then Rob from Flip, and then General Tank, They've all kind of banded up um, together a little bit. And then there's kind of a different crew that likes cichlids and saltwater stuff that kind of are in a different group of channels. Uh, and then Rachel seems to be like across all those channel groups, you know, the queen of nano. Um, dealing with a nasty exacerbation of MS for most of my, oh, MS for almost three weeks. I feel you and your issues. Um, yeah, it's, I, yeah, I feel you. I, I did a, that, that personal, um, exacerbation. <laughs> uh, there's so many channels I always get where they're from mixed up. Yeah, it's easy. I'm still learning the ropes and like, you guys might not know this or you might, I don't know, but there are like weird politics of like who's on when and stuff like that. Like not crazy or anything. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's made it interesting because I started this channel really in late December because I had quit a job that I had been doing for a while and I was just starting to only freelance on my own. And then uh, my health was really bad. I had some blood clot issues and I had some hospitalizations. And so I got really into the fish again and just started doing it. I was like, what can I do to raise a little bit of money and raise my spirits? It's rainy and dark in the Northwest. My wife had lived in Florida for like 15 years. She's 10 years older than me. Um, so she lived in Ohio and then Florida. So she's been out here for like 10 years and was in Florida 10 or 15 years. But enough so that Florida weather was what she liked. And it was so dark here. 
<laughs> What's the lights on top of the aquarium? Yeah, we were talking about this. I'll go over it one more time. Everyone always asks that. But um, they are Cree LEDs, C-R-E-E, -E, by GoSun, um, G-O-S-U-N. And then there's a bunch of Russian writing on the box, the ones I have. But they were like 29 or, I don't know, 25 bucks on eBay through, or maybe it was Alibaba. I don't know. My friend who's uh, uh, Bangladeshi and speaks several languages. He's a well-traveled dude. He lived in London and stuff um, in India. He comes up with this stuff, and he's got like I don't know, 30 tanks worth of stuff. So I picked them up from him, but they're Cree 30 watt LEDs. They get very hot. It's probably not a good place to put them, but they do an incredible job of growing plants without CO2 or anything. Although it's funny that I say that because I have CO2 running in this tank right now. This tank um, is running with CO2 because the auctions coming up in the area for plants and fish our big annual one and so i have all these plants like not scaped or anything but just like packed in i don't know if this does it justice but you can see there's cabamba there's limnophilia aromatica there's you know all sorts of stuff um <laughs> cougars are awesome caught yours eight years ago yeah yeah my wife is uh i mean i was definitely um I was definitely uh, a wild kid before. I mean, I'll share it with you guys. You guys, I know it affects my brandability, my business sense. This is another thing that there's some YouTubers who are really worried about that. And then others who are like, this is me. This is who I am. And then there's, you know, all, all in between. But in theory, YouTube has really cracked down about talking about like yourself and like, sex, politics, religion, you know, guns, all that kind of stuff. Like, don't talk about certain things because it won't make you brand marketable. But as a kid, I was a terror. I was, I mean, I was, I got good grades. I was our valedictorian, but, uh, and it was a school of about 500 kids uh, in my grade, but I was never there. I don't know how they let me graduate. I was into drugs. I was selling drugs. I was doing drugs. You name it, I've done it at some point or another. And went to college, got several degrees, still doing drugs, drinking all the time. And then finally, I got some treatments for my pain that was constant for the, from the lupus. And then also I had herniated discs and things. Um, what do you think about sex on guns when talking about politics? You mean, what do I think about while having sex with a gun? about politics? I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I'm sure some of you might have <laughs> channels that you watch that are, uh, let's, let's bring this back. Let's get a little personal now. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys might have channels that you watch that have been affected by like, you can't show explosions. So like, I like this channel called, um, Cody's lab. That is this guy, Cody who lives out in Utah and he just does like crazy science experiments. Uh, and he's like made gunpowder out of his urine and straw and uh, saltpeter from a mountain and just like just awesome science projects. He also like makes electricity and does all sorts of crazy cool projects. But uh, he got kicked off YouTube for the one where he made gunpowder. I mean, it's a recipe you can read. It's like three ingredients. But so, yeah, um, he got kicked off for that. And that was a bummer. But. A lot of people are worried about that. Um, but yeah, so as a kid, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Woo! Uh, and that might be where some of my like artistic sensibilities came from and stuff like that. Uh, but once I started realizing like the anxiety I had, the depression, and the... Um, sounds like the stuff my ex and hubby got up to while the ex lived here in our basement. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, sure. LSD. Yeah. <laughs> here. Um, was I going to show you guys? I have something to show you. Uh, yeah, now I'm good. Any Deftones love? Hell yeah. Yeah, I've seen probably over 2,000 concerts. My wife was a deadhead. She followed the Grateful Dead as a teenager, and then Jerry Garcia died when she was... I don't know, eight, 19 or something. And uh, 
so then we ended up um, we ended up being both kind of listening to fish. I didn't really like fish, but it helped sell things that I was selling at a younger age. So we have some life thing. Now we're both just like business oriented, normal, boring folks who don't do anything interesting. I'm just kidding. Um, but my wife now is totally like dresses very conservative, but like I was a tattoo artist for a decade of my life from 18 to 28 or so, um, underground and elsewhere. But like here, I just happened to grab these off the desk, but like some of this stuff's a little darker. This is a sketchbook from when I was 15, I think. And it just happened, or the binder happens to be where I did my taxes this year. But you can kind of see like, as a younger kid, I was into kind of crazy. And then here's the word Soma, which is kind of interesting because that's like what I ended up naming my company later. This is paintings I did back then. I mean, I don't know. And then later I got into botanical illustrations, like for universities and things, but also magical mushroom illustrations and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I've always been an artist at heart, but I was trained to be an archaeologist, an anthropologist, botanist, geologist, I suppose. Um, so I've always had a passion for learning. Uh, little man in the drawings who is speaking into your ear. So who do you think it is, the little man? Uh, I, if I analyzed my art like other people have, I would go insane. I just have, honestly, like hallucinogens have never been anything compared to my own mind. My dreams and stuff are always uh, deeper and more interesting um, than what's going on synthetically. Um, but I was going to show you guys... Another thing that I haven't shown on the channel before yet, but I don't know where it is. Um, as a kid, like, I, I had bad anxiety. And so part of that, I think, is like an overactive mind of just um, always... Hold on, let me switch this around. Of always... So this was one of the first books I published. It was a coloring book. It's still around. But I self-published this. And you can see, so I took the color out of it on the back. Um, you can see what my art looked like in my professional career as starting. It's kind of like pop art mixed with psychedelic, mixed with, I don't know, tattoo-y, cartoonish art? I don't know how to describe it. But, um, you know, there's also a heavy aquatic theme in a lot of my art, too. Like, this is from, I don't know, 15 years ago. This was a... In high school, a doodle I did, and then later I turned that into a uh, back piece for someone, uh, for a tattoo. This was some art that was on the street for an ex exhibition that I did in Vancouver, BC, and then in LA. This is like something I just saw in my head. Like, this has nothing to do with drugs, but I just, fractals and repetitive patterns and layers of things, uh, I've always been fascinated with the science and the mathematics of there's another big koi or carp um there's an octopus cooking dinner um when was i in vancouver i was in vancouver uh 2011 i had a show up there on um granville street at some bar type place that like held up some sort of thing with multiple artists and then I also did a it was like a live painting thing at a at a rave type place um yeah I do have shrimp sketches somewhere there's a couple of my videos that um have them but then in LA I was at the Skirball Museum because I happen to be Jewish just ethnically like my grandparents on my mom's side are Jewish and uh somehow they were looking for Jewish psychedelic artists because they did a uh, thing on Bill uh, William Graham, who was the guy who managed uh, Janis Joplin and uh, Jimi Hendrix and Cream and a bunch of other people. He did all their like 
press stuff and then he kind of managed them a little while in San Francisco for a short period but he's the one who that's my pet ocelot that I used to have I still have him someday I'll, I'll show you guys he's not here he's at my mom's house uh, where he's got more room to run so this stuff can't show too long on YouTube sorry that one um, that was a self portrait of me back when I was drawing this book got brain neurons and wavelengths and train cells I used to have really long hair I used to look like Lucas Brett's kind of but with blonde blonde hair at the time um, I like plants a lot obviously tiger lilies there's a lot of you know lilies and things in my drawings octopus ripping the tops off the mountains and ripping a moon out of the sky I've always loved octopus and cats this was a aunt was dying of cancer and it was like the battle of blood cells and cancer cells and I sketched that by her bedside two nights before she passed away um, this was uh, a session where I did some surreal art where I actually did sculptures of chairs and stuff all of this mind you I never thought like I'd get paid I, the last decade I've just stumbled into this this was uh, for Burning Man I'm from the West Coast, but I've traveled, I've been to every state except for Iowa, sorry, or wait, not Iowa, um, sorry, um, what is it, uh, not Iowa, but Nebraska, Nebraska is the state I have not been to, um, that one's interesting in that it's like a wild cat, house cat, and then the skull of a cat, yep, been to Illinois, been to Illinois, yeah, the religious one. Hindu, I can think a couple back. Can't. Yeah, I can't show it to you. Ganesh is the god's name. Hey, what's up? Patricia couldn't sleep. Um, but yeah, I've always loved rhinos. So I did a series too that was um, all endangered animals. And the money went, like half the money that was raised went to that. The other half went to like the cost of the event, basically. Oh, I can't show you. Well, it's covered up. But this was an album cover for someone uh, who plays violin. Um, more rhinos from that series. This uh, was a tattoo for somebody. It's on somebody's back. Uh, and she happens to be a, a Japanese woman. And so it's kind of a portrait of her with skeletons on the side and these birds from her travels. And then the Chinese Buddha, which I thought was interesting, but that's the one she wanted, and the lotus. Um, cuttlefish doing their thing in space with wavelengths all over and planet earth with starfish on them <laughs> I don't know that one's funny this one's one of my favorites this one is uh, an octopus eating like a Japanese sushi chef with chopsticks you can see he's like I don't know so some of my art's just goofy and fun and some of it like this was like all color all in color and for like snowboard this was for an Indian gal that I was friends with um, who needed a thing for her wedding uh, and so I made her that and then that was uh, it's on some snowboard there's about I don't know 5,000 snowboards with that on it so if that looks familiar in those colors there it was on a bunch of snowboards and stuff like that so that's like my day job so to speak and fish and stuff um, are a passion but history is a passion I have too many passions like I, I'm I'm in love with learning I'm in love with people and their stories and so any of those things that I can combine together like mushrooms are another thing that I really enjoy like hunting mushrooms and learning about them so any of that is sorry I'm holding this wrong I gotta plug my phone in uh, there we go so any of that's always cool to me. So that was my art. No, that's off track. But if you're still at me or at this channel that late, then so be it. And it's interesting. There's more people on the channel now. Um, yeah, it gives my life variety. It drives my wife insane, but she loves it, but hates it too. Because like last year I had experiments going like I was inoculating um, mushrooms to break down hydrocarbons from an oil spill in a creek up the way. And so I was using straw bales with like Paul Stamets, he's a mushroom researcher's method uh, to, to break down hydrocarbons into simple carbons. Um, but yeah, I, I, I frequently just have uh, random passions. Wood carving, stone carving, carpentry, electronic soldering. I've done a lot of stuff. 
Um, Betsy likes fiber, knitting, lace, bobbin lace, cross stitching, sewing, quilting. Yeah, I like that stuff too. I mean, that is cool stuff. Uh, I like cross stitching a lot, actually. I, I got into that for a while. I got into like macrame and necklaces, obviously, because I'm a hippie, right? Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I've had a lot of interests. Chemistry was one, law was one for a while. But I, I usually get really into something and like for a while it might be like aquascaping right now is really interesting to me. So I'm trying to spend all my time researching that, but it goes back in the, the brain bank or whatever. And then I'll move on to like shrimp or whatever it may be, something else. And then I don't necessarily lose my passion for something, but I try to not master, but understand like, oh, cool. I did this type of art. Now I'm going to do spray paint art. Now I'm going to do oil paints. Now I'm going to do uh, sewing or whatever, um, dance, interpretive dance. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think we're probably ending this cast soon, just also because battery life's not catching up with the charger. But thank you guys so much for joining me. I know this was kind of a like, hey, I'm Alex more than the fish on the second end of it. But, uh, I always enjoy your company, especially y'all that are on here regularly with me. Um, you know who you are. <clears throat> Fake name, Patricia, Vi, uh, T, Betsy, uh, Damien lately, Vex, lots of y'all. Um, so, great to see you guys back. I don't know if this is a time slot that I'll do again. I'll get a time slot down. Um... Getting a diploma in carpentry was the best thing I ever did. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm not satisfied unless I do something with uh, my hands. So, <laughs> who took better of who took better care of Egypt? Um, wow, the Egyptians—they had it longer. They have it again, um, but. That's a loaded question. Are the Egyptians from the Southern Nile? Uh, are you talking about them from the second, third, or first dynasty? Because uh, the first and second dynasties, that was like 2,500 years of uh, solid pyramids and stuff. But they stole the idea of the pyramids from the Somalis and the Sudanese. And there's still pyramids down there that they're only now uncovering because sand dunes had covered it. And there was the thing called the Ogaden war that has been going on forever in this remote area of the desert where no one lives anyways uh if they're south of the nile i think of them as hittites okay uh i got you i got you i think the sea people uh sooner time slot yeah totally um wow quite the question and history isn't my strong suit i can however recall the chapters on the saluki and the uh, and the Egyptians. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the Egyptians are fascinating. They were way ahead of everyone else. The Chinese don't get enough credit. They were doing a lot. So were the Cambodians and the Indians. Indians have the oldest written language, probably, in the sense that we understand it now. Turks, too. Hello, Sergeant Tank. I mentioned you earlier, and how you have rad art, and how you're awesome so hello <laughs> just saying who was out there go cambodians yeah Angkor what what Angkor what um just in time for alex to sign off yeah basically so i'm sorry sergeant i'm getting off um but it was great talking with y'all and i will talk to you guys later it says low battery low bat oh yeah i'm at three percent right now so i might cut out in a second here but thanks for chatting I don't know if anybody liked that weird frog video I posted about how frogs and birth control, uh, frogs were the first pregnancy test, but that was kind of odd. I'm, I had eight or nine videos ready, and I uh, lost them on the computer. They all got deleted, um, and so now I don't have any backlog, so I missed a day or two. It was different, yeah. Uh, yeah, my wife was like, I think you've lost it. Um, I don't think anyone wants to hear about that. Um, but in any case, 
Always thought rabbits were first before that video. Yeah, rabbits were were first. They were. But you had to cut them open, and it wasn't accurate compared to the frogs. So, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. The guy, Lancelot, Sir Lancelot Hogben, that's a cool name. Um, yeah, in any case, uh, the rabbit died. Uh, so, all right, guys. Well, I will uh, talk to you later. Sorry to ditch out on those of you who are just there. Don't forget to like if you haven't done that yet. Makes me feel important. Um, but I will talk to you guys soon. I should have, in the next week, I think, uh, LRB Aquatics, so Lucas, and then Flip Aquatics, Rob. I think I've got stuff coming from them. I, for sure, I mean, I gave Lucas some money, and I'm working on other projects, so I know he's on the way. Uh, Rob is really busy because he had like this quarantine that was just up and he's been shipping all last week and so um, hopefully he, that madness is over and I think he's going to start to be a regular contributor to this channel and then that way I can like if he gets a new species I can show you guys the new species of shrimp and maybe go more in depth than his live stream would like maybe do more of like the scientific or the biological history of it so we'll see how it goes, but um, should be some shrimp videos coming up really soon here as I have reorganized the tanks and they're now all ready for shrimp. So uh, I, there's like eight tanks ready for shrimp, or six tanks ready for shrimp and two that are ready for caradina, like totally um, just caradina. So, all right, good night. Take care. Uh, I'll talk to you later. I love you all. Keep on swimming. Take care of your critters and yourself so you can take care of other people too. All right, guys, take care. Bye. Cam.